A very good afternoon. Thanks for clicking on to the Thursday edition of Vogan's European Outlook, the 3rd of March, and we continue to monitor the La Nina and its influence on Earth's atmosphere. The UAH temperature has come out for the month of February, and we'll have a look at that in literally just a second. But let's have a quick look at the current sea surface temperature anomaly profile, and uh, you can still see the firm La Nina in place at the moment, really from extending from just west of the Dateline to South America. We've got the, the cool um, down from Alaska, down the west coast of North America. We've got a little ribbon of cool here just south of the equator from Africa, extending almost towards uh, of tw just almost off Indonesia. And uh, I'm struggling to say that. <laughs> and uh, you've got, of course, the warm North Atlantic, South Atlantic, and the very warm North Pacific here. And that has been very much reflecting the lower tropospheric temperature anomaly as well. Because if you notice here for the month of the month of January in the lower troposphere, you can see very much where the warmest air masses has been. So over the warm North Atlantic, the North, warm North Pacific, you've got, of course, the warmth over much of, uh, of Northern Asia. And of course, you notice your draw your attention to the tropical belt here, and you've got average to below average temperatures here. So, looking at the latest um, lower tropospheric temperature profile here, you can see what has taken place in terms of uh, the area between North America and extending into the Norwegian Sea and even parts of the Arctic Ocean uh, area of very very cold air at uh, the lower tropospheric layer very warm still over the north pacific and um, over the, the the very warm waters if you notice got warmth still over the north atlantic but that's been deflected into the uh, the, the kind of mid latitude or mid latitudes extend into the low latitudes very warm if you notice here uh, over the middle east extending up over the top of uh, asia but you can see very much where the strong polar vortex within both the stratosphere and the troposphere has been dominating the air mass here. Very cold compared to normal, extending from uh, from much of Canada across uh, over Greenland and uh, the North Atlantic here. And that, of course, has been the driving mechanism here uh, with the very strong westerly flow, uh, positive Arctic oscillation, positive North Atlantic oscillation. Warmth has been deflected into this region here and of course we've had a very powerful jet stream running in between these air masses here so the month of december has looked like this here in terms of the uah satellite based temperature of the global lower atmosphere you can see december it was at plus 0 0.21 degrees celsius above normal january was plus 0 0.2 0 0.03 celsius above normal and the very latest, February, is bang on average, which is very interesting indeed here. And you can really see the, the, the lower tropospheric temperature profile going with the, uh, the of course, the Super El Nino that went off in 2016-17. We've got the drop-off with the uh, La Nina, which uh, came on during 2017-2018. We've seen, of course, the rise in temperature globally once again last spring and last summer uh, indicative of the collapse of the La Nina and then of course it redeveloped during the autumn uh, of 2021 and since then we're seeing the drop off in temperature and I think we'll continue to see that temperature dropping off as we go through the spring season. It wouldn't surprise me if it was actually a negative figure here for the month of March and even uh, April as we go forward. And of course, inevitably, what will happen is we'll see a El Nino developing once again, and the global temperature will come up. But it's interesting to see at least the downward trend in temperature. And one of the, one of the factors that I think we are going to see the temperature globally come down below average is the type of spring pattern that I'm expecting. Now, we'll continue to watch the stratosphere as it warms at 10 HPA. We're going to see likely the uh, downward transfer of that warming into you know 50 HPA, even 70 HPA, which is ba basically the borderline between the lower troposphere and the upper 
uh, the, the lower stratosphere, sorry, and the upper troposphere. At this very moment in time, I think the Madden Julian oscillation is playing a role in changing the upper pattern. We've now got dominant high pressure over Europe. We're going to see that area of high pressure build northwards, keeping our eyes on it, of course, the undercut and cold extending from Russia westwards over the continent of Europe. Of course, we've still got the, the Atlantic influence here, the jet stream still active. The core of that is going to be further west, and we're seeing a big split in that jet stream at uh, 40,000 feet. One branch going north, one branch going south, and it's really going to be interesting as we go forward here. This is a clip, by the way, from Tuesday the 8th of March. High pressure strongly just east of Finland at 1030 millibars. Uh, east, uh, or should I say, uh, east to northeasterly winds underneath that area of high pressure transporting cold polar air westwards towards the uk and of course you can see three areas of low pressure almost ganging up uh, to the west of ireland and the british isles here and of course we've got the big battleground between the cold coming in from the east the atlantic weather coming in from the west could we see snow events taking place a lot of that depends on how much cold air that high over russia it delivers uh, to the UK here. So a lot of uncertainty over next week, but you can get the overall idea. We've got high pressure, blocking high pressure, now back in play in the boundary between the mid and high latitudes once again. And it can only be attributed, I believe, to the Madden Julian oscillation starting to progress uh, over the tropical belt, having influence further north over the northern hemisphere here. So let's go back to the here and now here and uh, you can see the overall setup here as we go into the weekend we've got uh, a boundary sitting over the british isles at the moment high pressure over uh, over norway as, as you can see here keeping our eyes on this feature here over the atlantic but notice here as i play through this latest gfs run that area of, of low pressure gets deflected to the south with area of high pressure that builds over the british isles for the month or a uh, month <laughs> for the weekend as we go forward here that area of high pressure largely centered over the north. That will be where the best conditions will be. We've got a bit of a, a, an east to northeasterly flow, if you notice here, coming in across southern portions of the British Isles. So we may start to get a little bit of a chilly, nagging east flow around that area of high pressure. But we don't have those isobars poking their nose right up into Scandinavia. So we're not transporting any air from off a colder source but it could be a kind of nagging easterly wind all the same. As we go from weekend in the next week, that's when things start to become more interesting. As the area of low pressure becomes a little bit more established to the west of the UK, that area of high pressure strengthens as it kind of gets nudged back into Scandinavia. So basically the entire system, low pressure over Atlantic, high pressure over Europe, is all shifting bodily eastwards. But all the while, area of high pressure over, over Europe becomes stronger, becomes a bigger driver. And as it starts to push north, that's when we start to get the undercutting cold area of, of winds uh, underneath that here. So it really is going to be very interesting to watch next week as we go forward in terms of the overall out, outcome here. But we also have a lot of cold air over the Atlantic as well as over Europe. And the two areas of cold air uh, may merge uh, to set up a, a fairly chilly outlook overall as we go forward here. So let's have a look at the 150 millibar temperatures here because, like I say, you know, we've got cold both uh, west and east of the British Isles and they may start to squeeze together as we go forward here. So let's have a look and see where we're at here. So relatively mild air, if you notice here over the UK at the moment, colder over the Atlantic, colder over Europe. Like I say, both are going to start to kind of push together and may create an interesting uh, solution in terms of wintry precipitation as we go forward here. You can see here as we go forward that uh, we've got plenty of colder, very colder coming into northeastern Europe, if you notice here uh, in the early next week. And we keep our eyes on those purples and blues as they start to undercut that area of high pressure that is over Scandinavia here. And then of course, we've got the fight coming in uh, from the West as well. But notice here that that cold air is getting deflected into Southern Europe here.
but this is one solution and there will be alterations in the model as we go through next week keep our eyes on that cold air because it may start to kind of perch further west here all to play for and uh, it is going to be worth keeping uh, an eye on the pattern as we go forward here let's have a look at the uh, the gfs ensemble here for the next uh, week or so here so this is the current setup here of the ensemble of course that's a you know all 51 members coming together blended together for for the one solution here as i play through it's a bit messy at the moment high pressure in the north extending down through uh, france here low pressure over the atlantic low pressure over the southeast of europe as i play through the loop things become more um kind of becomes a bit tighter the, the core of high pressure becomes more established uh, across the top then we start to see the negative here extending from russia through central and southern europe we've also got the negative over the atlantic here that is going to try and push towards the uk as well here and like i say the battle crown comes uh, underneath the core of that area of high pressure so we, we're going to have that fight from the southwest we're going to have that uh, encroaching cold polar air from the east here and it's really at the southern base of that ridge is where we're going to see the collision of of atmosphere here as we go forward so that's it for today do check out um all the features on marfaganweather.com including the latest update on march the march outlook that is available for you to read now and uh, i'll hopefully be back on saturday with more bye for now